To Geekology. I'm David. I'm Sven. And tonight, yeah, it's an educating day. You've had about three months off, pretty much, other than the, 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 the books. Shut up. Okay, well, at least it's a masterpiece. I like doing the masterpieces. Yeah. You never know. If you're really lucky, I might be able to get my mitts on a Megatron. Ooh. The new Megatron. Yeah. Okay, I like reviewing. Oh, I'll have to show you the pictures of the new Dinobot soon. Okay, so what we have here is a typical Takara masterpiece box, i.e. matte black with superimposed photo of the toy. Yep. Deadly in hard gloss. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Front description. Very good. Four units on the side. Yeah. Yeah, nice shiny foil. And the back artwork, yeah, depicts the, the robot mode yeah. and the toy mode and some of the little bits they've hidden therein. And a the list mode. of what is mode. hidden. Well, I was referring specifically to the fact that you can. Yeah, yeah but you the said the robot mode and the toy mode. Okay, that is a valid point. <laughs> yeah, it is. Well, yeah. Okay. I'm thinking both modes are a toy mode. On the basis that it's not the same. Hang on, whoa, whoa, whoa. Did, did it hurt? What? Thinking of, I've been told the first time can be a bit painful. Not for the likes of me. Uh, right, so. There are first things that are more and more painful when they involve. I'm joining in. Get out our cone head. Right, just pop that out of view and hopefully out of shot. Okay. okay, so let's have a quick look at this one. So he's getting my cone head. Out I'm not going to bother taking the the pilot out, who is obviously, as he's translucent plastic, meant to be a hologram. Yes. Weapon pods. Yes. Or are they sonic jets? Sonic tears. Yeah. Do they slip on over the guns or do they, they go somewhere else to do something? Yes, they slip on over the guns. Yeah, okay. I assume. Bearing in mind I've never really taken this out of the box other than to make sure it wasn't knackered. Oh, so essentially I'm violating your toy. You're violating my, my birthday present. <laughs> this has been sitting in a box waiting for us to have a gap so we can get it done. <laughs> I'm not doing any jokes about your gap. <laughs> Okay, I, I like the fact that the guns actually have physical extender pieces. They all have that. That's that's nice. I know. I'm you don't remember them, do you? Um, Wait until they all come out onto the table. And the jets. Oh, is that all those boxes were? Wait, yeah. is this a big video? Yeah, I did warn you in massive ways. When? Last week. Oh, you wait till I was halfway asleep before telling me. I thought we were just doing this thing. Oh my god! Nope. It's the last of the, the Decepticon jets from 84 and 85 they're doing a masterpiece of. So, we're rounding them up. Oh god, this is a round up. I knew I, knew I had too much Don't Star Trek for What happened with the last masterpiece round up we did? Oh, in series one. Oh god. It's been four series! not long enough. Go on then. Play with your toy. It's not a girl's so. Or that. Um. <laughs> right. Dirge bits. Um. Dirge is a Decepticon jet. Do you want me to change this over to be magic tape? Not too bothered. It'll only be open once. So. A lot of girls say that team as <laughs> My god, the bloopers are going to be long, long for this one. Because we prefer a long one. <clears throat> and if these intelligence drops... Okay, in so we've got a bio card slash tech spec slash... Yeah. slash. It's a slash card. <clears throat> 
Make sure you're not making that up. You should make it slash fiction. <laughs> oh god, that probably exists for Transformers, doesn't it? What do you it? mean, probably? Oh, of course it Internet's exists. Internet's full of it. Yeah. So when they start sexualising them, I get worried. Well... No. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think they released RC? Mm. It's not just RC, though. I don't want to know. Neither do I. Don't want to know. And I do. I don't really don't, don't know. Is this where we can talk about kiss play figures? No, God, no, no, no more. Um, right, Dirge is a character who was introduced as a toy in 1985. He is known as a, one of the cone heads because in the cartoon series, they basically, when animated, them didn't fold down the front of the jet behind them, like it said in the original instructions. They left them up so people could tell the difference. The fact they were completely different colours from Starscream, Skywalker and Thundercracker apparently wasn't enough. So nothing to do with Saturday Night Live? No. Okay. Okay. Um, Dirge was one of the three that came out in 1985. Um, this is pretty much the colour scheme of the G11, which appears here. The G11? The G11. This is transformed Actually, correctly. That is this is transformed the same incorrectly. Correctly. Bits fall off. Um, to be fair, it is like 30 years old at this point. Um, but yes, there it is. And um, to be honest, they did that when they first <laughs> came out. That was the worst part. Um, and quite a simple transformation on the G1 one, so... Yeah, even I think I can figure out how that one transformed. Yeah. We had an awful lot of parts forming on these things back in the day. So you took bits off, put packets back on, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Undercarriage. Simple effective turn mode. Here's something you've heard quite a lot of in your life. God, Sven, that was quick. Have you been looking in a mirror again? <laughs> there we go. Like all the other Decepticon jets in 1984 and 85, the centre body part is exactly the same. I know there's not a lot of weight difference, is there? There's a bit. I was hoping to mock it and go that the uh, G1 one was heavier, yeah. but it isn't. Right, okay. Um, swivelly head, frontwards and backwards. Yep. Um, good bit of articulation there. You just bear in mind it's stiff. Um, there we go. So we've got shoulder movement, we've got ankle, um, sorry, ankle. we've got um, elbow movement, a uh, swivel at the, the bicep as well. The fingers move, we've got thumb and the first finger are separate and then the last three fingers are all together. Mm -hmm. um, and positionable weaponry, uh, which is on this boom, which makes sense when you transform it a little bit. Right, as far as the legs are concerned, we've got um, hip movement, we've got a knee bend like that. The toes can kind of be positioned, but not an awful lot, but you can swivel it around because of the transformation. So on and so forth, engine covers, and um, you've got this weird wibbly bit on the, uh, on that. That's a technical term, yeah, wibbly it's, bit. It's definitely a yeah. technical term, oh, okay. yeah, a wibbly bit. Um, but yes, it, do, it does the job. It's very similar in spec and design to the earlier jets, slash strike planes, slash seeker, whichever term you prefer. I prefer strike plane, but that's me. Um, they were generally referred to as Decepticon jets in the UK, to be fair. There was one Hasbro catalogue that referred to them as strike planes, whereas the worldwide name that seems to have caught on is Seekers, which never appeared on any official stuff in G1 ever. Okay. I don't get it either. But there we go. Oh, right, so shall we transform this? I think that might be a plan. Okay, I'll get a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 da. So what sticker was on here? It's not one of them. Mm. I noticed all of my Decepticon jets are looking a bit worse for wear all of a sudden.
and after what feels like a small eternity, here we are. Um, you know, we were talking about the colours being the same. They're very close. What's with all this grey? Why is the nose cone grey, not black? No, I presume they've gone to try and make it look more like an actual jet. jet. Yeah, I'm not sure I like it like that. But hey ho, I actually do prefer that colour scheme. Yeah, except for the gold in the plastic, uh, the sparkly gold plastic wing. Ah, but this was '85, not the '90s, so it's not going to fall apart. <laughs> That helps, that yeah. does help, yeah. So, uh, yes, that's, um, as usual with the, the jet modes from the Masterpiece, we've got the cone that opens and we have the radar dish inside. Uh, don't worry, I will be giving you high-res photos. Check out the Flickr account. Um, God, are they paying us the amount of advertising you give them? No, but they're giving us a terabyte of storage space for free. I'm letting them off. No. Frankly. A terabyte? Terabyte. They give everybody a table yeah, because yeah. that's a lot of storage. It's a lot of storage space for photos. Mm. Um, but there we go. All of the access panels and all this kind of stuff to get into it. Nice. Um, so you can't really knock it for that kind of thing. But it's exactly the same as all the other jets. Um, there we go. So this completes essentially... Um, 1984 and 1985's Decepticon Jets slash Strike Plane slash Seekers uh, from the original Generation 1 being brought into the Masterpiece line. Mm -hmm. um, as part of this we've had two figures, that, yes it is two figures that are Neo G1 in that they didn't have a toy originally okay. but were kind of in the show and they did later versions of the characters um, so they did Acid Storm which has been done as a masterpiece. There's yeah. never been an Acid Storm G1 officially, but it was in the Classics range. And then Sunstorm, who was done as a special when they were doing the reissues in the 2000s. I do and actually then, remember us yeah. reviewing yeah. that. Tango Starscream, as it was. Mm. Um, but the Western masterpiece has a much more interesting colour scheme. Mm. Um, but I still want a Japanese one as well, because to me they look like they're so different. They can be different characters quite happily. Okay. So, and there we go. One dirge. Um, oh, it's, don't it's, be so hard on yourself. It's not that bad a review. It does the job it's supposed to do. Um, it's not cheap because of the way it's been produced for Japan. It's in small numbers, just like Thrust and Ramjet. Um, Roger. I think. I think it's a Decepticon Jet completist only situation, like. Thrust and Ramjet, yeah, because they are a little bit of a chunk more than the other jet releases, except for the MP11 versions of Skywarp and Thundercracker, which were based on the second version of Starscream they did rather than the first version of Starscream when they released Skywarp and Thundercracker the first time around using an early version of the mold, which has some kibble going on in the, the legs and stuff like that. Okay, but what we're going to do. It's been as this is the last one, but there's a caveat there, um, is I'm going to pull out all of the other jets so we can compare the whole lot from the Masterpiece line and then just to take the nick, I'm going to put the G1s in front and some extra G1s. I'm going to go and have a nap. We'll be back. And welcome back. There's a few jets on the table. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, we've basically... Possibly come to the end of the Masterpiece Jets range, but at least certainly come to the end of any retooling of this lot. Um, they've reissued Starscream a few times now, both in this version of the mould, which is the MP3 one, yeah. to the MP11 mould, which is more like what this and this well, and that's these an guys MP11 are based mold. on. Yeah. yeah. Um, I shouldn't know that! <laughs> so that's an MP3 mould. Yeah. That ended up being an MP11 mold, but the box says box artwork suggests it's an MP3 one. <laughs> but it's an MP11 because <laughs> they changed the, the the head so it couldn't you couldn't switch faces on it, yeah. which is an MP3 thing. The MP11s can't do it. Um, but the biggest giveaway really is you see on this star screen you've got this kind of skirt thing going on yeah. with the with the side here, yeah. and there on there they're, they're connected 
to the leg. That's the, the main difference. Um, the Starscream is actually the MP3 USA edition mm -hmm. that was released in, in Japan, but um, this crown, etc., is actually a third party set uh, because the MP11 version of Starscream came with this plastic cape that you could open and close uh, um, and doesn't look very good at all. Um, the Japanese version of Sunstorm has a cape mm. as well um, and it's much more like the colour scheme of that Sunstorm yeah. than that. Um, other things you'll see at the front, um, I've tried to group them with their other versions so Thundercracker, Thundercracker, Skywarp, Skywarp and that's a Skywarp. That's the British Argos release Skywarp. That's the Japanese original release Skywarp. Yeah. You'll notice that the, the, the Japanese one hasn't got any of the purple striping. Yeah. Or any of that. And the fins are black. The fins are black and like the purple ones on that one. Yeah. Um, thrust, thrust, Starscream, Starscream, Dirge, Dirge, Acid Storm. There is no G1 Acid Storm. So instead, all I've got here is a jet mode ram jet that's basically got stickers in the wrong place but it's much whiter than my original one which is much which is yellowed with age yes. somewhat because uh, that's the one I had in 1985 um, and I need to basically take the stickers off that and get some new set of stickers and put them on properly mm -hmm. um, so yeah there's there's Ramjet um, Sunstorm Sunstorm then you've got these guys which are all exclusives which are no <laughs> these two are yeah Ghost Star Screen, that was done as... That is gorgeous, by the way. Yeah, that was done as, um, I think it was an e-hobby exclusive mm. when they were doing the book reissues, just like they did with uh, Sunstorm was one of those Yeah, but as I don't well. care about that, it's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and then you've got the black, silver and gold version yeah. of Star Screen, which I created a character for, shockingly, mm. in some of my fanzines, because I did that a lot. <laughs> who didn't let's be fair um, this is generation 2 Starscream okay in his weird paint scheme um, also came with um, the I've been tangoed camo well no, the, I've been camoed yeah um, you've got camo and then tango topped oh no that's 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 yes pink. or no because it, it's pink it's pink Ew. Yeah, it's that horrible pastel G2 pink thing going on there. Um, apologies, it's not complete. The pieces are somewhere at home. I just couldn't find them. Um, I had to suddenly pack them all up at one point and I haven't found all the bits again uh, quite yet. And then you have Generation 2 Ramjet, which is this purple thing with teal bits. And yeah, no, and, and he's actually got his, his pack with him. His electronic pack, and I'll turn it on. Oh, yeah, he mixed the... Uh... How G2 is that? I mean, seriously. These are some better days, to be fair. But he still lights up and makes the sound. Yes, yes, so. he does. With the original batteries. Oh, that's depressing. <laughs> um, so, there's those. Now, that does mean that there's some potential for repaints, but they won't need to do any remoulding to make these. Mm. So, you could literally do a clear version of the star screen, probably using that mould, to be fair. Um, the same with that colour scheme. G2 Starscream, that's going to happen at some point because it's Starscream. Yeah. The, actually, I tell, I am telling a lie, there is already a Ghost Starscream based on that mould. Okay. I've just forgot. They did do that. It was a special uh, one they did at the Masterpiece line. It's just I don't have it. So it's one of those few I don't have. He but doesn't have it, therefore he doesn't take his list. I, I, I have no knowledge. Um, they definitely haven't done that. They haven't done a G2 Starscream yet. But I dare say that will follow on mm. at some point. They haven't done a G2 Ramjet yet. I dare say that will follow on at some point. There were actually two further repaints of these two that were conceptualised but never released. Okay. So I dare say they might turn up at some point as well. Um, whether they'll make them different characters, that would make sense. Uh, there is actually three colour variations on Ramjet, Dirge and Thrust from G1 catalogues mm. where originally they had um, Thundercracker, Skywarp and Starscream colours but with the different wings in different colours. So one of them's got a nickname Nacell and a couple of others so there's basically there's also that possibility. Mm. So this could very well be the end of the, the Masterpiece Jets. 
a bar a couple of limited three colours. Before you possible. wrap up on the masterpieces, yeah. you told me because he, yeah, just even when the camera's not there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and one of the G1 faceplates was special. Which one was that? Thundercracker. One? Would you like to tell the people at home why? There we go. Thundercracker has a painted face. Do you want to have a look at it more closely? Because he's not fragile or anything in particular. Okay. If we look at the face compared with the other ones. Oh yeah, the eyes are painted gold and the, the face is definitely... Yeah. Whereas definitely normally it's a black face and you've got a sticker to, make the, to put the, over the eyes. Let's, let's pull him out and compare. Yeah, Star Wars probably a good one to have a look at. The difference is huge, isn't it? Here it really is. Okay. It's like having the difference between a, a painted face magnus and a non-painted face magnus. When they did that, because with Ultra Magnus there was um, a version with slightly different wheels. It had um, perspex in the windows, whereas mm. the later version had nothing. Nothing, it yeah, it had a hole, didn't it? Um, and then both of the heads were painted on the first version and not painted on the second version. Okay. Including the antenna on the big robot when they were painted silver on the second version than they were on the first. So that's a bit weird. Um, but yeah. So this could be the end of the Decepticon Jets in the Masterpiece line. A lot of people would be pleased about that because you might actually get on seeing some of the other characters. Because mm. um, they have reissued Starscream over and over and over again. I mean, in, in the States, I think they're on the fourth issue of him as a Masterpiece. Mm. Something like that. Always slightly different decos. Okay. Crazy. Um, but the latest one is very, very cartoon accurate. Unfortunately. Um, but I'm not sure how they were marketed in the States mm. because in 1986 the way they were selling toys was significantly different to the way they were selling them here because our um, assortments of the boxes so, so when you bought a case of say eight Decepticon jets originally you would have an assortment of the three different characters mixed in yeah in year two in the States you got the four different characters mixed in because they got rid of Thundercracker and Skywalk and replaced them with Dirge, Ramjet and Thrust but kept Starscream. Um, then to confuse things even more, in the States they stopped all of them and replaced them with two other characters mm. and in the UK they kept them going and just mixed in the two new characters into the, into into the, the assortment. Okay. Those characters being from, the mo from Transformers the movie, the original animated ones, mm. which are Cyclonus. Yeah, we know him. And Scourge. Which also was screaming do a little repaint because in the in the animated film Scourge had a bunch of troops called the Sweeps mm. and Cyclonus was introduced to Cyclonus and his Armada. Now with Cyclonus especially there's a massive difference between the original toy colouring and the animation colouring. Mm. So when, for instance, they did a classics version of him, he was in lilac or in that purple, depending on where you bought him from. Yeah. Um, and Scourge is Scourge. Yeah. And they also, because they had only been out for a year, mm. they then popped them back out in 1987 with Target Master companions, but they meant that they had to increase the size of the holes in the fists and put a hole on the back of the jet modes so they could plug in, or rather in this case they took that. Um, crest off mm. um, but they were only available for a few months so they've ended up like the Autobot cars that became Target Masters some of the rarest of, the, of that range from 997 but I dare say we won't see those two get done as masterpieces until they do Galvatron and they've only just done the second version of Megatron to match in with the new range since the MP10 the Prime version. changing yeah. yeah so there we go um, 1984, 85, and all of the extra bits that were plugged into it, almost all done. I dare say there'll be some repaints, but that's pretty much the moulding changes and the, the, the end of that generation of Masterpiece Jets.
rounds up our roundup. If you've got any comments, we'd love to read them, so please leave them in the comment section below. You can subscribe to us here on YouTube, you can follow us on both Facebook and Twitter, and for lovely high res images, check out the Flickr account. Oh god, now to photograph me. Where to? The planet Zarg. Yeah. Hi and welcome to Geek Holland. Mm. So if we're going to wait for you to be presentable, that we just don't have the time. I, we don't have battery power. I don't. I have work tomorrow. We don't have enough sunlight because the sun will burn out. Yeah, I get it. Hi and welcome to Geekology, I'm David. I'm Sven. And tonight, da 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 da! No, no, time. We're not doing da 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 fucking da. Uh, oh, have you realised how ridiculous that was? Yeah. 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 Da 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 da! <coughs> um. It's not even that it's just. It sounds really strange if we do it on every video. Hi and welcome to Geekology, I'm David. I'm Sven. And tonight. Dave educated. Yeah, we're educating me. We're educating me on masterpiece dirt. Now, if you'll excuse me for a moment while I try and look interested. Right then, so go on. <coughs> you know you like the yeah. packaging. Yes, I always like the packaging. Okay, this so. This is a Decepticon. Yes. Jeez. Again, I do like the Decepticon as well. So, we've got what is standard for Takara's masterpiece range. Black matte with high gloss finish, superimposed photo art. Don't worry, I'll be giving you some pictures because it's nice like that. Mm -hmm. Don't forget the Flickr account, you might be able to find them in much better resolution there as well. And one of the nice things about the Masterpiece one, <coughs> and one of the nice things about Masterpiece when they do it, they do actually use photos of toy, toy art. Yeah. They, they don't just go with toy art. The back is. They don't go with toy art? They do go with toy art. <laughs> Do you want to start again? That is an art of the toy, that's a photo of the toy. That's not artwork. You mean artwork of the character? Well, you could argue that it's always artwork of the character, but it's normally artwork of the toy. No. Yeah, it's you not. You're going to argue that this is not a toy, this is a character. No, that's that's no, because of the original boxes they used artwork, not of the toy, of the character doing things the toy couldn't do. Uh, well, okay. Yeah. On this, they haven't used artwork, they've used photos. photos. Yes, okay. but unfortunately, what you said was they didn't use character artwork, they didn't use toy artwork, they used toy artwork. That didn't say. Do you want to say that? I'm yes. going to check the edit. Yes. That's why I pulled you on it. It's because you said they used the thing, but they didn't use do the same thing. Do, 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 we just did the cafe thing. Yeah. Pass me the box and we'll have a new go at that. Shall we start? Actually, I'll give you a fresh cut as yeah, well. Yeah, let's do that. Fuck it. You can have the whole kit and fucking caboodle. Take 26. <laughs> What mug have you given me this time? Plain it's black, are you, are you No, yelled? it's not. It's not. Starfleet Academy, it's just that the... The label the, fell off? The metal, the metal thing came glue. That happens with those. Damn Unfortunately, pace. all of them do that. Well, yes, because they were glued on with thermal glue. Here's a good idea. Let's make some mugs and put on some pewter logos using glue that melts with heat. On mugs. Yeah, but it does, in all fairness, take quite a lot of heat, it's not normally. It takes quite a lot of special people to think, oh, let's, let's use some glue that will melt. Hang on, hang on. Well, let, let me put this down, we can have a quick side discussion. Are you honestly calling that company special? What, down pace? In, in comparison with companies that have made Star Trek mugs. Like yes. the mug company that produced a whole range of Classic Trek and TNG 
mugs that when you open the box have a label on the inside of the mug saying products used in the construction of this mug has been proved to cause cancer. Are you honestly saying that was a bad marketing plan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if you're a Daily Telegraph reader, um, everything causes cancer. Yes, but the, the actual... <laughs> it wasn't even just Air one causes cancer. It wasn't, it wasn't the one of the um, pieces used what in the construction. What company did that? I wonder if it's listed as Star Trek all... Cancer Mug. <laughs> Star Trek. It might be. I have... The best thing is, I have a complete set of the mug in the attic. Complete with the labels, because loads of comp people took those labels out when they put them on sale. <laughs> oh, no one can sell with that in there. Um, Star Trek mug causes cancer. It is. At which point I will now put up a picture of him in Starfleet uniform as a mug shop. Oh, don't do that. Uh, let's have a is that look. evil? Is oh, that evil? Causes cancer. Okay, so that is loads of people showing. Pictures of them that I, uh, Star Trek mug. It would have been the 80s. Was it acceptable then? It was acceptable in the 80s. Right. Okay, those are the thermal ones. I like the thermal ones. Okay, Google. Find me uh, the Star Trek mugs that apparently caused cancer. I think you would apparently need to remove them. Search. Come on, I don't want to have to go into the attic to get one down. Oh my god, the Guardian got onto it. Uh, 116 things that can give you cancer. Smoking. Smoking. Mug. Star Trek mug was on Star the list. <laughs> In all fairness, they were quite well labelled, but you had okay, to Okay, Google. It. Search for carcinogenic Star Trek mugs. Ah, there we go. Let's see. There you go. That was one. I recognise that artwork anyway. Oh. Who, who made those? Because that looks damn pacey as well. Presents. Yeah, that was actually the name. That's the name of the company was Presents. Mm -hmm. Or Presents. They did bugs. They present the present in the present. Mm -hmm. They find a desert deserted in the desert. Find any more of these. Let's put. No, okay, now we've got. Presents. No. Uh, Viacom do... Consumer Products. How do I... Presents. How do I... how do how do I... Coffee mugs that'll give you cancer. Sorry, what? 557655443367895. Charlie. <laughs> Uh, yeah, because they did, they did a load of classic Trek and a handful of TNG ones. Yeah, yeah, there, there you go. Okay, Google. That's that's one of the classic ones. Oh, right. Alpha... Oh. Sorry, I don't understand. Okay, Google. That's because you're talking to Spain. Lots of people feel that way. One, two, four, seven, six, six. they uh, retail for ten dollars. And they paid out how much in uh, in damages? They didn't have to because of course they put the warning in. They put a warning in. Don't use this. Yeah, they they were bought <laughs> decoration only. But the thing that cracked me up was nowhere on the outside of the box did it say this. It was on a, a slip of paper that was on the Thank inside. Thank you for buying this mug. mug. Don't use it. Yeah, thank you for buying this mug. Don't use it. Yeah. Absolutely cracked you cracked me up. So so I would go with that was a worse concept. Yeah. The, the the thermal glue that you had to get. Oh, really quite hard.